Hey everyone, welcome back to another broadcast of In the Trenches. I'm excited to have on today's call Johnny Helland, who's the creator of Motion Effect. Johnny's story is a pretty interesting one. He started off from a pretty rough household, started with nothing, and was able to work his way up to be a successful entrepreneur and the number one Shopify expert in all of Norway. And in today's conversation, we're going to talk about his seven steps to self-mastery. Now, I don't want to give it away, but I will say I think one of the most profound ideas that I came away with from our conversation is the idea that you are in control of the things that happen in your life and that if you focus on self-improvement, self-growth, and focus on how you can become a better person and create a better, bigger impact and live a more meaningful life, that there's really nothing outside of your control. So I'm really excited for you to listen in on today's conversation. So let's get to it. Hey, Johnny. So before we get into seven steps to self-mastery, I want you to give us a little bit of behind the scenes. Tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to what you're doing today. Yes, sure. So what I usually do with my background story is to be really true and honest about where I come from how I started out in life, because I use that as an example for people to show them what's possible in life. And uh, I usually start from when I was a kid. I usually tell people I come from a pretty scary, noisy background. I haven't really been into any um, trouble myself. It's not about that. It's the grown-ups around me that didn't really treat us too well. There was not any violence, but we, as far as I know, we moved about around 32 times with my mother, including living in tents and motels. and. Uh, after getting rid of my stepfather number five, I was basically living alone with my dog up on the countryside. And at that time I went into, luckily I found Taekwondo as a kind of a life path and stayed on that path for 17 years. And I have to say that it's been, you know, one of my main thing for transformation and um, been having my jobs, like little jobs, nine to five, I've done that. I've had three jobs and kept them for a long time, kind of a stable employee, but after my last job, working as a hotel receptionist in the weekends, in the nights, which is kind of a zoo in the city with the people. After five years, I did that and I decided to um, jump into it and go full time with my freelance lifestyle as a web designer. So, so I think that's, that's a super short pitch of where I come from and what I've been doing. So web design has been my main w- uh, business for, for years now. So tell me a little bit about kind of that transition because you kind of glossed over it. it. Sounds like there was some struggle there, some some difficulties, and probably more difficult than you're letting on. So I don't I don't want to go too deep or whatever you feel comfortable with. But how has that shaped what you're doing now, and how has that formed kind of your mindset and how you perceive the world and how you act? You know, I guess we learned a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, and I'm I'm always open and honest with things that's been going on. It, it's not really that relevant now, but every life, every human on this planet. They're living their life and have a kind of a uh, emotional reaction pattern based on past experiences. Everyone has that. So, so I guess that some of the things that turned out to be a struggle later on is uh, kind of maybe probably a feeling of being accepted. If things are good enough, are we loved and all that? So it shaped me in the way that I'm being really good at seeing people, analyzing, understanding, and sensing people. And um, I kind of developed that also through the 17 years of martial arts because there was some really really early on i was really much into the eastern philosophies i didn't read too much about it but for some weird reason from uh, when i was a kid i was really connected to asian style of martial arts you know the eastern philosophies especially taekwondo so something attracted me to that kind of knowledge i guess it started after i quit my last job spent a lot, a lot of time alone um, i still lived alone i traded my dog for, for a cat. I wasn't allowed to have a dog anymore. So I got a cat and had to find my own way. So I've been basically spending a lot of time creating my own success and learn, figure things out. So I have become the kind of a figure things out type of guy because there are answers to everything if you really want to dive in and do your own self-education. So, so I guess I have become the guy that have just, I just had to figure things out and, and, and make it. And uh, it's been with uh, everything, just living by myself, finding good daily routines, find a, create a lifestyle that can, uh, you know, keep my energy up. But I also went into a lot of self education when it comes to spirituality, mindfulness, um, why we're here on the planet, and also when it comes to my, you know, my daily work routines. When it comes to being a web designer, I never went to school, but actually I did. 
I went two years to private own school here in the city where I live. But it turned out to be, um, you know, the teachers didn't really have too much knowledge. So I basically turned out to become a teacher myself. Got you know, my own office, I stayed there for a year. And uh, the school went so bad, they just had to shut it down. And I, I just, I was basically forced to get my own jobs. I found my own way and I've created my own lifestyle and learned a lot from that. And I see what's possible to do. And that's why I want to do that continue to do that and, and teach people that things are possible no matter what kind of background you come from. So I call myself a self-educator. Love it. Perfect. So give us an overview of the seven steps of self-mastery just real briefly, and then I want to dive into each one. Yeah. So some of the things that have been created when um, I first started my blog, one of the things that I noticed from my 17 years of martial arts, 15 of those, I've been a trainer. I love training people. I love coaching them and being close to them and see them grow and transform them because everybody, I would say 90% of the people on this planet has a huge potential that they don't use. So I want to boost that through my work, through my self-education and through those years of martial arts and that system, it led me to write the seven steps to self-mastery. And it's based on what I learned myself. It's compiled of um, knowledge from a lot of good sources and, you know, famous writers and I don't want to call them gurus, but, but you know, people that have really reached far when it comes to deeper understanding. So I picked out seven important steps that actually will transform people's life if they read and follow and, and understand that. So it's about communicating a system to people that if they follow that, they will greatly expand their minds. They will get a deeper understanding of life and they will move into a kind of a lifestyle that will take them so much further without being attached to the system or dependent of the system like school or any authority to tell them what to do. So if you want, I can go the quickly through each and every step. Did you mention that? Or Yeah, I think that would be fantastic. So let's start with, with number one. Everything starts with a thought. That's where it all begins. I guess even the universe started with a thought until it exploded. And now we're here. <laughs> so everything you do, every, all the things you spend time over the day starts with a thought. And as long as we know and understand that we have a choice about our thoughts. So number one is the choice of thoughts, where it all begins. Because I know that there's a lot of people living you know, life by default. They think that life happened to them. And as soon as you begin to understand that you can take control and manifest the life you want, things will start to shift. And it actually becomes also kind of a mind shift physically in your brain. Neuroscientists know that now. When you focus in the right way, when you do meditation even, you start to change your mind. You can see that on brain scans. So number one is to uh, understand that you have a choice of thought. And so if somebody's struggling with, with that, like how do you actually adopt that as a principle and put it into action? And if it is as simple as it sounds, that's fine too. But I just want some context as well. Yeah. I think the most important thing is to understand that you are in control of your own mind, even if you feel that you are not. I know there are people on this planet thinking that they are being mind controlled. And in a way... Um, <laughs> A huge part of the population are through media and entertainment, but you still have a choice. You don't have to follow anybody else if you don't want to. You can redesign that belief. That's why we get into that in step number two, by the way. But there are methods to do this. And I always recommend to go into meditation because it's, I mean, people like you and me, Tom, in this business, we know that meditation is becoming really popular because it has a positive effect on the brain as long as you keep it as a daily routine and habit. That's when the change come. Perfect. Okay, let's take it to number two then. You know, number two is about belief systems and established assumptions because everybody, as soon as we wake up every day, every day, you know, we base our lives and our actions and um, what we plan on on something that we believe. You know, a lot of people on this planet believe in some really weird things, and um, it can be a lot of things. And we know that there are forces on this planet that you know hasn't really worked out at all and uh, create nothing but wars. Because people believe strongly in something. So it's really important for someone moving into self-mastery to assess what do I believe in? And maybe even what do I not believe is possible for me? Because humans default state on this planet, what's something they are really good at is self-limitation. Humans are masters of limitation. And uh, because of that, I guess that is part of the reason for the state of the planet. So that's why I write about belief systems, because that's something we need to stop up, assess, and see if we can reshape that, modify it, and um, expand our minds 
Because if we live by limiting belief systems, you know, you're stopping up. Things will become a struggle in some way. How do you identify those so you can make that shift or make that change so you can get to that point where you, you understand what you're capable of? Well, you know, we are humans. And what I usually say is that humans, we are more than our bodies. We are more than our brains. That's part of the self-mastery training because we are energy beings. And I guess even scientists um, are beginning to see that in some pretty cool ways. And that includes that we have an emotional guidance system. And everybody has that, but not everybody's in touch with it. A lot of people are afraid about their own emotions and in, in their own inner compass in a way. But I am referring to that, our inner compass, our own inner guidance system, because it's, you know, our emotions give us some clues and indicators what, what's right for me, what's working, what feels good, and what does not feel good. I tell people the way it is. A friend of mine a few years ago, he was into a um, religious sect in this city. And um, basically with a lifestyle that was completely normal, he got thrown out and people didn't want to have anything more to do with him. The good thing with him is that he, you know, he started to self-educate and he, he noticed that that belief system, that's not working out for me because it was hurting him too much to be able to keep that lifestyle and that belief system. You know, it's, that's a pretty strong example, but, you know, it's not hard to see that that was not good for him. So his emotional guidance system told him, well, if my family don't want to have me anymore, that's a pretty clear indicator for me that something is not working here. But besides that smaller, you know, smaller things, smaller daily life routines, we just have to sit down at times and just try to sense our stomachs. What do we feel about this? Does it feel right for me? Perfect. Okay, let's move on to number three now. Yeah. So. One thing I want to write about in the seven steps to self-mastery is the choice of personality. And I wrote these seven steps in an order that's um, important to follow from one to seven, because it's about reshaping it and transforming yourself. So when you begin to understand, you have a choice of your thoughts and you can assess your belief systems. You start to see that you also have a choice of personality because you just see how many students I have met and trained that are not themselves. And of course, the kids at that age and young people who, who really get to be their true self, but even grown up people, you know, too often actors in their own life. I have had friends that are one kind of a being when they're with me. And as soon as we get out in a coffee shop or meet other friends, they change and become someone else. So I would say that it's time to be, be true to yourself and understand that you have a choice of personality and you have the option to style your life in the way you want. So step number three is about taking control of your life. Use your inner power and, you know, you can you, choice of personality. You can be whoever you want, but I would say be true to who you truly are. And that's a discovery path. So choice of personality is about not being someone else, not be someone you're not, not just follow blindly the system. No, actually, the last six months, Tom, I've been having four students coming back to me from from past Taekwondo trainings many years after that are totally lost and worn out by either job or school. They told me that, well, I, I you know, I, I just did what I was told. And uh, one of the younger guys, he's 17 now, he's going to therapy because of school. He's pretty weak now in his character. So he tried to be his, the best version of what his dad expected him to be. And that wore him out. So that's, that's why he go to, goes to, to therapy now. So Choice of personality and lifestyle design is about being who you truly are. Got it. And number four is about hacking your core and finding your true self. So walk us through that. Number four, who are you? Yeah, that's about time to get into that then. When you understand in step number three, you know, choice of personality, when you know you have control and you are able to be who you truly are, then we need to dig into who you truly are. And uh, it's about hacking your core and and finding your true self. And that is, you know, sometimes it actually takes a lifetime for some people to figure that out, but it connects with your emotional guiding system. It's about being true to yourself. And we sense that in our bodies when we try to be someone we're not. So who are you is, is a segment you can move into to try to discover some of your true passions and values. What do you believe in? What are your skills? Who do you love to hang out with? What kind of music do you listen to? What kind of clothes would you really like to you know wear where do you like to hang out what colors do you like there's a lot of things you can go through to discover some hints and secrets of who you uh, show you more of who you are and sometimes i even tell people go to a really good astrologer and get some get some hints of your 
you know, typical traits for who you are, your personality based on your birth charts. So I have a question to kind of interject here. I'm curious because a lot of this is, it definitely gives like, I I think the premise gives people the freedom to kind of choose their path. And I know that's, that's a big piece of this. I wonder about orientation because you said like, it's not only choosing your path and orienting and finding out who you are, but it's that kind of self-discovery. Well, my question is this, if somebody has like gone through some, some difficult times, how do they properly orient? So for example, like I'll do, draw an analogy from the military. When we're doing land navigation, if you don't know where you are, the first thing you have to do is stop and figure out where you are. And you can do that a few different ways. And I think that analogy might be appropriate, but you have to stop where you are and figure out where you are. And, and there's some, some ways you can do that, some tactics, some strategies. And then the second thing is then knowing where you're going and then being able to then determine the path forward. So I think a big part of this, it sounds like, is kind of that check of where are you, that reflection. Yep. That definitely resonates with me a lot. But I still wonder about the direction you should go. How do you properly, if it is about kind of getting that new perspective and everything like that, I think where you go is really important. So walk me through your thoughts on that. Like, how do you define what is the proper path? Well, since you're asking me, you know, I have to, I have to talk about uh, or get, get more into the, some people call it spiritual concept. Because this is uh, such a deep question. And the first thing I would say that, because, you know, in, in my life, I live by that we have lived before and we're always going to live again. And when you dive into that kind of knowledge and, um, you know, check on research and, and stories, you, you can find so many cool, interesting facts about that. And the thing is that I have been taught that when we come to this planet, we choose our own parents and our life will have one specific red thread that would be a theme for our lives. And uh, for some souls coming to this planet, uh, it might just be uh, kind of a random, not random life. Everything happened for a reason. But the thing is that there are some lives that have one specific purpose on this planet. There's a specific task or specific mission for this life. And sometimes it, it takes a few years for people to realize that and to see that there are, there have been a, you know, a few hints on their path so far that it's been given that show them that there's something that's supposed to happen or there's something that they're supposed to do. That's why some people have some struggle with trying to fit in with the typical norms and you know get that education and get a job because that's what we're told to do. And then it starts to hurt because it doesn't really fit their energy pattern for what they're supposed to do. It doesn't fit their agenda for this life. And then you have a life that it doesn't really have a too big deal with one specific team. So sometimes the life doesn't really have one set specific direction. So then it, then we go a little bit in, in now to the next step. And that is actually starting to figure out who you are and figure out what gives you joy in life. Because every person living on this planet have something they enjoy to do. They have something, some quality that tells them there's something they like to do. So sometimes you actually just need to stop in your tracks and look around, like you said, one thing again could be meditation and then it's not to have an epiphany and suddenly discovered by you know hearing angel music or see sparkles shooting out and just see the grand plan but it's about slowing the brain down and the number two is that i would i would actually um i have a I have a work chart actually that i help people with to discover that but i would start to talk to people around me and just ask them who do you think i am what am i good at what do you say i'm my quality are what do you what do you think i should do in life and not just to find a direct answer and, you know, go for that, but keep doing that for a while and see what comes out of that. You will probably get some hints and some answers that's repeating. If you connect with those answers you get and it, you know, gives you a little bit of spark of energy in your belly, that's a hint of who you are and where you should, um, should go next. I like it. Okay. So now I think that's actually appropriate because the next step is five, playing with the future. Walk us through that. So I think that was a good segue here because... I think that part is really important. So, well, I, I don't know if this is the right choice, so how they get to that. So, okay, so they know they need to move forward. They have an inkling of it. So now let's talk about the future and that kind of path forward. I also want to shoot in that you can figure out your life path if you stop walking. That's one important thing. It's fine to stop off for five minutes, look around and sense and feel, but you have to keep walking because you won't see new pathways and uh, roads un- unless you walk. So... But anyway, when you get through that number four step and just start to discover things, you can start to play with the future. And now we get into the kind of the manifesting thing. It's about mindset and visualizing. It's about starting to um, trust in the universe, I would say, and, and trust in yourself. And it's about allowing. 
what could be possible for you in this life. And this is also about belief systems again. And that's why I put that earlier in this seven step process, because if you have some belief systems that blocks your energy and tells you that this is probably not possible for me, then you need to step back and readjust. So playing with the future is about starting to choose where I think I want to do that. And then it's also about being focused on that and probably get a mentor to keep you on track, you know, to be accountable and to teach you how you can plan. You and I, Tom, we like to plan and we like to plan visually because this, you know, it, it sits in our mind better and it's easy to actually see, see the path and see the future. If you're looking for a specific outcome, either it's an experience or a partner or a thing or a simple thing as a car or a new house, keep that in mind. Uh, maybe draw it even. Go to a place where, where you find that kind of object you would like, take a photo of that, put it up on the wall, meditate on it. I usually tell people that when it comes to manifesting your highest dreams, do that often, but keep it to yourself. <laughs> Don't let anybody's mind energy in on that and the thought process and negative influences. Keep your true dreams for yourself, but talk to yourself about it often. So yeah, playing with the future is about being creative and allow yourself dare to let the universe show you some magic and, and that things are actually possible. There's some, some amazing stories you can find about that. Do you know how Jim Carrey got his first millions? He wrote a check for a million dollars, right? <laughs> Yeah, it did. Yeah, I just saw that documentary. I'd read about that a long time ago, I think, but I just watched this recent documentary that brought that up. Yeah, yeah, that's a good example. I saw it the first time in one of the uh, old shows with him and on Oprah Winfrey, he, he said that the amount he wrote at that time before he got famous was no check. He kept it in his wallet for years. And when he got the first check after, you know, playing the actor in Dumb and Dumber, he got actually that ima exact amount that he was visualizing and writing down. I love it. So number six is all about goal setting and then planning for that future. So walk us through that. Yeah. So uh, now we're moving into more fun stuff, more tangible and, and practical stuff. The other steps is about going through a transformation. And we, when we have decided a future and decided a direction, it's a good thing to, to have a look at what other people have done before us, how successful people plan and get moving. Because if you don't have a plan, things have a way of just you know, floating around, whatever you do, you can keep walking, but you know, any, any direction is fine if you don't know where you want to go. So it's about simplifying. It's about um, being good at uh, choosing what not to choose, because that's about simplifying. So you'll have a clear path, a simple path. And there are some different charts, forms, and methods of planning. And uh, I wanted to write about this because people visualize and plan and think differently. Step number six, again, it could be a good... Um, moment to consider to get on a call with a mentor just for an hour and you know and just get some things written down because sometimes it's about actually writing things down so you can see it maybe set, even set a date you have to see it in front of you it makes actually it makes things manifest it becomes physical it starts to become present in your life i love it okay so now number seven this is where we talk about that new life so walk us through that yeah the last step is um kind of a reinforcement step. Um, I call it a side plan and create because now you have gone through so much, so much transformation. And some of the steps you might even have, get some help now and then. It could be good. Get a mentor, get a coach, get a spiritual counselor or whatever. Just make sure that you don't drag around with some old bags that you, you know, that weighs you down because then you won't be able to fly anyway. So now step number seven is about decide, plan and create. And um, when you reach this far, uh, you probably... You have written down some goals. You have written down your dreams. You know more who you are so that the plan that you actually created is aligned with who you are. Because if you don't, uh, things won't work out so well. It, it can work out, but it, will probably, it won't make you happy. It won't make you feel fulfilled and like you have a meaningful life. But as long as you follow all these seven steps, you should be more, have a bigger chance at least to be aligned with the, uh, your future self the person you, you really want to become. So it's about deciding. Deciding is about putting energy into something. And uh, I often refer this to scientists also now that uh, finally start to see and discover things on a metaphysical level that a lot of people have heard about the double slit experiment, that particles suddenly change as soon as you observe them. And, and some people have also heard about, or I'd, at least I like to mention the Global Consciousness Project, which uh, shows... The planet that when a huge and insane group of people 
absorb or focus on the same thing at one time, the global mind energy changes. And those data, those 57 eggs placed around the world from the Global Consciousness Project, that data starts to change and shift. And that's been proven also by uh, group meditation in your, New York City. You have the exact same uh, power in your own mind. So when you start to focus on something, uh, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And if you have a plan, you know where to go. And then you start to create. Be uh, persistent and believe that you can. I love it. So when you've gone through this process with clients, Johnny, tell me, like, what do you find most people struggle? I can share a story with a lady that <laughs> totally shifted um, a couple of years ago. She actually had the same kind of job that I had. She had been, I think it was five, six years on a hotel as a receptionist daytime. She was good at that. But, you know, after six years at a hotel, you, you get tired, sometimes tired of people. And she wanted to get into, she had to do something else. She noticed that she started to, to get sad when it comes to work. It was kind of a resistance. It didn't really make her happy anymore. She called me. She knew what I was doing. And she just asked for a coffee date meeting. And, and she asked, can you help me find a new path in life? And I said, I can at least help you um, discover yourself. So we started this process and we used um, this worksheet that I used. And where it stopped the most for her is actually, like I said in the beginning, she didn't even see her potential. She didn't see her qualities. Her mind was so trained to her daily routines at her jobs. She didn't have any reason to expand anything. She just did what she was told and like a robot. And uh, there was no reason for her mind to expand, try something new. And she didn't even discover her other qualities that she had. And uh, you would never guess what she moved, <laughs> moved, moved into after we were done with a one, one month coaching. So from being a hotel receptionist, she started a business at home as a dog's kindergarten. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So that was her new life. And she, you know, we boosted... I like to boost people's energy when we get into our conversations because that's a pro when a process starts to happen because I force them into a mindset change and a flow of thought that they never had before. And that, like I said, you can't stop in your tracks if you want to discover yourself. You have to keep walking and probably take another path instead of going in that same roundabout day after day, listening to the same music, seeing the same people. You know, you need to get out of that that kind of roundabout ditch, try a new path, and then you will start to see some things. I told her some things about her that she didn't see herself, some qualities as a person and a human. Yeah, this is what she's doing now. She's in control. She can be at home with her kid and her husband, and she's getting more and more business with people coming to drop off their dogs in the morning. I love it. Well, Johnny, we're coming up to the time here. Where can people reach out to find you, learn more about you, maybe read some of your the content you're producing and also share your YouTube channel, which I'm a big fan of. The floor is yours. Where can people find you? I'm all over the place, usually at a coffee shop. <laughs> when it comes to um, the online world, my main hub is uh, motion-effect.com, motioneffect.com. This is my main hub. This is my main blog. And um, on the front page there, you will see all the links to my channels. So uh, one of the social channels, Instagram is my main channel. And um, YouTube is my second, which will be uh, my first priority in 2018. And uh, I should have done that years ago. I've been working with film for years. And why didn't I put that on YouTube? I don't know. But uh, we got it started now, a few months ago, and uh, people can go and have a look. So Instagram and YouTube, you will find the links at motion-effect.com. I love it, Johnny. Well, thank you so much for being in the trenches with us today. Highly recommend checking out Johnny's stuff. I'm a big fan of his YouTube channel and the Seven Steps to Self Mastery, the ebook that you can get that goes in more depth on the topics that we just covered. So, Johnny, thank you for being on In the Trenches with us today. Thank you for being on the show, Tom. Happy to join.